Well, I know this might seem awfully strange, me grilling you about who's coming to lunch, but there is a, a, a definite method to my madness. Well, that's a relief. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm meeting Nick for lunch, and I thought that if this was a family affair and, and Melinda were coming, that maybe I would just uh, save us all some awkwardness and I'd meet him somewhere else. Uh, I, I don't feel too awkward. How about you, Dylan? Well, you know, it's this, uh, the planets must be in some weird alignment or something like that, but the three of us just keep, uh, bumping into each other all over town. And, uh, I mean, we're obviously all adults and we can be civilized. Well, Dylan, you know that, because you've been there when the three of us have been in the same room, and we make quite an effort to get along, I think. Right. And it seems phony as hell sometimes. No offense. Well, no, I, it's, you know, courtesy can uh, appear insincere. In this uh, situation, I don't really know what else would be appropriate, though. I, it's a difficult situation, what can I say? Yeah, it seems to be more difficult for some than others. Oh, Mr. Lewis, I know I feel badly that you have to see your daughter in pain like this. But in all fairness, when Nick and I got together, she wasn't in town. And, and as far as we knew, she was never coming uh, back. Now, now, Dr. Guthrie, you don't have to uh, get defensive here. I wasn't implying that you'd done anything wrong. Matter of fact, I wasn't speaking about Melinda's suit at all. I think she doesn't care one way or the other about you two. I was, uh, I was just trying to make life a little easier, that's all. Oh, great. Then we can relax. Mindy was invited here today, but she had other plans. So, if you want to, you and Nick can go dancing on the tabletops. Nobody's going to give you a second glance. Right. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you. Did you think you were a little rough on her? I can't help it. She's always so concerned for Mindy's sake. It's all an act. You know, I guess we're lucky your sister decided to go over and go fishing at Miller's Pond. You know, we ought to go on over there, see if you caught anything. Hey, and if she did, we'll take it home and terrorize Nadine with the baton. She's got to clean it and cook it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that there were things that were said that never should have been said. And for that, I need to take some responsibility. Things were just... just not making sense at all. I, I was just flailing around, trying to find reasons. And, and so you decided I was sick in the head. There's nothing wrong with your head. Thanks. And I was wrong for trying to suggest to you what to do with your life. Oh, well, that's a relief. Oh, I feel so much better now. Except, um, there is one little thing. What? Well, if you believe and agree that I have full control of my faculties, how did these things happen? I mean, how did those pictures get destroyed? And how did Eve's windshield get smashed into smithereens? I don't know. You don't know? No, Melinda, I don't. I wasn't there. I didn't see it happen, and you didn't see it happen. And Eve? I don't think that Eve saw it happen either. So, some bored but obviously half-crazed innocent bystander decided to sneak into my bedroom and tear up the pictures of me and my ex-boyfriend. And then, still desperate for amusement, he or she decided to go down to my shed and grab my shovel. Melinda, I'm just trying to be fair here, okay? We don't have any proof about any of this. It's stupid for us to assume that we do. No, it's stupid for us not to use the brains that God gave us. Can you talk about proof like we're in some kind of courtroom? But we're not. And I am not sending Eve to jail. I just refuse to sit here while she plays innocent. Can't you just admit the truth? Right here. Right now. To me. You know what it is, Nick. Then we never have to mention it again. But uh, have you thought about my proposition? Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot. Let me see if I get this right now. You're offering me a job? Yes, I told you you would be top on my list. Now, since when does a major corporation need a dispatcher of alternatively supplied goods? <laughs> is that what you're calling yourself these days? Yeah, I get tired of fence. Fence is, it's got no dignity, no class, you know? Well, if class is what you're looking for, working for Spalding will certainly give you that. Yeah? Working how? Doing what? 
being my assistant. Assistant? Yes, you'll pick up things, deliver things. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are we talking messenger here? Huh? Mr. Errand Boy? Six figures a year, and that doesn't include bonuses. Now, which sort of messenger boy would make that sort of money? This one. This messenger boy right here. Okay, what do I got to do? Where do I sign? You don't have to sign a thing. You just have to promise to make me laugh. You can pay anybody to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I could, but I don't think I could count on them for the, the long haul. Grady, I can count on you. Yeah, well, if you, you know, can't trust the guy that gets busted six, seven times a week, uh, who can you trust? Yeah, please. <laughs> please, I mean this. I can trust you. I know you're not going to sell me out for a bigger and better deal. Hey, Jenna, come on, for a lady that just got dropped in a vat of chocolate, things don't seem so sweet. I know, I shouldn't be complaining, should I? I have more money than I know what to do with. But this time it's, it's complicated, especially where men are concerned. Uh, excuse me here. If you're going to start talking about how they're only after you for the bucks, you can forget that right now. This is Grady you're talking to. I remember when you had guys lined up from here all the way to London Town when you didn't even have a shilling. You remember that, sweetheart? I do, I all do. All right, okay. But now that I have all this money, it's different. It's somehow much more fraught. It's... I don't know. It's... What's to know? To tell you the truth, I honestly don't have any idea who my friends are. I did entrust that decision to you in my absence, and now you've demonstrated that was a gross mistake. So clear out your desk, you're fired. Oh, yeah. So what, what were we discussing? It'll come to you. You've been at Lewis what? Now, three weeks? You probably still have to ask directions to the men's room. I doubt you've got much to offer me in the way of a hot tip. I can recite from memory the list of Spalding clients Vanessa Chamberlain has on a lock and key. Ooh. So? So? I know who she's going to pick off and in what order she's going to pick them off. You know a game plan? You can cut her off at the knees before she makes the first move. First of all, I don't need no stinking list. See? Vanessa's going to go after every client that's of any possible value to Lewis. There's no mystery there. Which is why I've already taken steps to alert our people that they will be approached, and when they are, Spalding deserves a chance to match any offer. That's good business. Shows a lot of perspicacity. Kind of obliterates any pressing need for you, though, doesn't it? Wow. I just wanted to help. Sure. For how much? I thought you didn't need my services. I doubt I do. I'm just deathly curious just how much you were planning to hold me up for. Oh, I hate to talk numbers unless there's some purpose to it. Well, I'll tell you what. Any purpose that I might be interested in has actually nothing to do with random client lists. Well, what would it have to do with then? Well, I doubt very much that you have access to Billy Lewis's personal affairs. I'm his wife's cousin. I go to dinner over there. How much more personal can you get? As a matter of fact, I was over there at dinner when you came in to offer your best wishes. You probably didn't notice me. Now, so what are you telling me? That Billy Lewis likes you? What's not to like? Enough to take you into his confidence? What do you want to know? Well, now, Rex. I may call you Rex, mayn't I? If I can call you Raj. Roger. That'll be fine. Rex, I will confess to you that it troubles me deeply the uh, extent to which Billy Lewis has pulled the wool over the eyes of the people in this town. Oh, has he really? Oh, come on. His image, you know, his persona, if you will, is that of a... Big old football throwing, mama hugging, grits chomping old country boy. Right? But uh, you and I know that's a crock, right? Well, you can't begrudge a, a man his entertainment value. Billy Lewis is as capable as the commonest crook of cutthroat, even shall we say unethical behavior. It's a tradition handed down from his father and his father before him now. If you were to discover those soft spots, the uh, dry rot in the old family tree, that, that I would be willing to pay for. But, hey, for all I know, you consider yourself part of the family, right?